I am so absolutely happy to be here with the man, the legend, keeps on running away, Mr. Joey Dosick. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to UCLA Radio. You know, starting uh, as one of the interviews, you said you started learning piano at age 10, uh, no, at age five, and then the saxophone at age 10. Um, what is it like growing up in a musical background? Are your family also into music as well? Yeah, my family's into music. No, no one really um, did it as a profession in my immediate family, but um, my dad um, studied classical voice, mm -hmm. and that was kind of his passion. Um, so there was that around the house. My parents love music, and they go to the symphony and to the opera and to concerts. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, there was, like, music was always around, you know, as well as, like, just, like, my parents' record collection, mm -hmm. which probably was the thing that had the biggest influence on me. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I just took to it for whatever reason. I, I took to took to the piano, and then I kind of, like, rebelled and wanted to play the saxophone, mm -hmm. and, which was, was a big, like, rebel move at the time for <laughs> me. And... Um, that's what uh, you also studied at the University of Michigan Ann Harbor. Uh, you majored in uh, saxophone or piano? Um, yeah, I majored in, well, I, technically I majored in jazz, but jazz. I, w I went there for saxophone. Gotcha, gotcha. And then halfway through, I was like, wait, I want to be a songwriter. That's what I always loved the most. So mm -hmm. I kind of started transitioning away a bit. Got it. And, you know, as, as technology is advancing, um, and you could record a song lit literally anywhere on your phone, on your computer. Do you still remember, like, the first song you recorded? <sighs> yeah, I was late to that game. I was late to, like, the, the computer recording game in a way. The first song I recorded... Um, God, I think you really stumped me here. <laughs> um, there's a couple things. There was... There was like one track that I recorded for a, like a, for a, to music to accompany dance in college. Mm -hmm. That was like it was kind of free jazz, kind of like bitches brew, like mm -hmm. Miles Davis e. So there was that. That was maybe one of the first things I recorded. And then um, the first song I recorded was this um, song uh, that was called One at a Time that I used to play. It was one of the first songs that I wrote. And um, I recorded it in Ann Arbor, and I used to play it all the time, and nice. now no one can hear it ever again. What? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully one day I want <laughs> one of the shows. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I know you've been uh, touring, and I also recently found out that uh, you toured in, in Japan. Um, and what, what is it like, or what is the difference between uh, touring in a foreign country or compared to the U.S.? Just every, I mean, every place you play has a different um, sort of, the audience will have a different way of interacting with music. It, it happens in the States, too. Mm -hmm. Different cities have different identities. Um, and, I mean, especially as it relates to your kind of music, mm -hmm. I think. But, like, I mean, there's a difference between L.A. crowds and San Francisco crowds. There's a difference between New York crowds and... I don't know, let's say like Asheville, North Carolina or something. So then when you change countries mm -hmm. and you go to Japan, Japan has got a completely different way of interacting with music, um, mm -hmm. at least my music. It's probably different for all different kinds, but mm -hmm. in Japan it's very... Um, audience, audiences like are very respectful and they will listen with huge ears, mm -hmm. you know? But if you tell them to make noise or to do something, they'll do that too. So they follow directions yeah. like very, very well. Um, and yeah, it's, they really listen over there. Nice, nice. Um, what, are, what are your favorite memories in, in Japan? What cities did you visit? Um, so the, the second time I went over there, I went over there with Maki mm -hmm. and we did like, a semi-proper tour of Japan, which I feel like most artists coming from other countries don't do. Like, most artists will play Tokyo and maybe Osaka. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, like, almost like a proper tour because he was on a... Um, he had a label in 
Japan that was putting out his stuff. Mm -hmm. So we played um, Tokyo, Osaka, um, Hiroshima, um, uh, Kumamoto, mm -hmm. um, uh, Kyoto. Kyoto. Um, Kyoto's then, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and then there's one, uh, Fukuoka? Fukuoka, yeah. Yeah. I, and I, there might be one other city that we played too, but it was mm. like, it was really cool. Cause nice. Did you guys take the bullet train? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. <laughs> we did a little bit of driving too. Nice. What is it like driving on the on the right side? Did you Are you comfortable with... Oh. Wait, do they drive on the left side there? Oh, no, no. Uh, oh, you mean right, on, the, on the right side of the, of the, of the oh, wheel? Oh, there yeah, was yeah. a driver. Oh, there was a yeah, driver. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha, no, gotcha. I'm trying to do that. That's scary. <laughs> I'm not no. brave enough for that. <laughs> no, I feel you. It's, it's hard. And my, uh, my parents tried doing that, but they were, they were used to driving on the left side. But, yeah, no, from, uh, and let's take it back to the States. I know of you and Wolfic also perform at uh, MSG. And I also noticed that uh, your, your index finger was broken. Or your, right, your right hand was, how, how, did, how did that happen? And how did that affect uh, the, the set? Yeah, that's, that's what I like, man. We're getting to the nitty gritty. We're getting into the injury report now. Um, so, yeah, I had, let's see. I've got to go into the pre-pandemic times, the, the pre-panda times. Um, so I, I had injured my finger playing basketball. Um, I didn't break it, mm -hmm. but I, I sprained it, which is a torn ligament. And um, I had done it, I think I did it right before... Um, it was the week before we played the Greek theater that year. I was, I was, I was right. I was there too. You were, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, so I heard it like the week before that show, mm -hmm. um, which was a drag. Um, and so I, yeah, they, you tape your finger because it's sort of like a buddy finger yeah. system. So like one finger's helping the other, um, and then yeah. So I, I had injured it playing basketball, trying to swipe out a steal or mm -hmm. something, and someone hit my finger and it just tore my ligament. Gotcha. Uh, but glad, glad you're all. Oh, we're good. Now. We're good. We're good. And I, oh, I know I've, I've sprained every finger multiple times. I've broken both wrists. Ooh. You know, sprained all, my both my ankles a million times. All, just, all basketball related. Yeah. Gotcha. And I, I know you're a huge. Or basketball. just clumsiness. You know. <laughs> no, I feel you. I, I sprained my uh, left foot by playing hockey. But I know you're a huge basketball fan, and you recently played at the Lakers Stadium for the national anthem. And how how is that? How like? It's. It's a really unique experience. So the recently, um, the, I did a national anthem at um, Chase Center in San Francisco mm -hmm. and, um, at Game One of the Western Conference Finals for mm -hmm. the Warriors. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, which ended up being kind of um, important because they won, ended up going to win the championship. Mm -hmm. um, the national anthem itself um, is sort of. It's it's pretty weird. Like it's a mm -hmm. it's definitely a weird song, um, and kind of not the best melody. It's like mm -hmm. not the best song, you know. But um, it's a really unique musical moment that happens at these games where we give the floor to the featured person who's going to do it, and then they get to sort of like showcase themselves in a musical style and an expression using that kind of terrible song you know mm -hmm. and everyone has to like shut up and listen to it so it's a very unique little thing where it's like you know we're actually just here to play basketball and drink a beer but because of this like formality of like flag waving which you know is kind of questionable in and of itself yeah. a lot of times um we're going to have, uh, m you know, maybe make a, a musical memory, bad mm -hmm. or good. So Most I, I really enjoy it. And so it's a thrill. And also to be that close to the game is, mm -hmm. is a big thrill for me. Most definitely. And, you know, loving the new single, Make a Wish, and which is what you're Thank also you. going to be performing later. And there were some rumors about a new album. Do we, do we have like a release date for the next single possibly? It's soon, soon. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, it's there's a whole lot of music coming mm -hmm. so thank you thank you for your patience but it's it's very much on the way and yes there'll be more news very soon super excited and i know uh quarantine the covid is still happening and do you find it different uh making music uh and qu quarantine like is there a different creative process or is it just 
like you're kind of stuck in a bubble making music. And God, it just it feels it feels um, a long like a long time ago already, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. It's like we're not in quarantine anymore. Yeah. Thankfully, um, and it all feels so long ago. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm just thankful to be out of my house mm-hmm. and um and, i mean the process started as just being a very lonely one creatively mm-hmm. um there were ways to get around it like i did a couple writing sessions on zoom or mm-hmm. i did some sessions masked up mm-hmm. and um you know but i was being very careful during the pandemic too um to protect my loved ones um absolutely and um then after that i was just very thankful to kind of take what i did on my own and then bring it to collaborators and in that way it allowed me to kind of take it over the finish line mm-hmm. nice uh yeah no there are like a lot of um at UCLA we have like local bands and we just uh there's one common question that always arises but has isolation changed the way you release music I don't know I mean I think just time passing has changed the way I release music uh because everything's constantly changing I feel like when I started releasing music, you just put an album out, you know, and you put the music out. And in a way, I feel like I'm still, um, that's kind of the core of who I am. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a huge part of me that would love to just drop drop an album, like, you know, tonight Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's so much more that goes into that these days. Um, a lot of which is just like, you know, whatever the cult, the, the culture of, of content and mm-hmm. how much content is just out there all the time in the game that, um, you know, you're encouraged to play mm-hmm. in that way. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing that's changed since yeah. I started putting out music. And also with like interviews, I know, um, you know, Matt Claus and uh, Alexa Tweed um, from Lonely Town Live. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough um, to be working with them at Lonely Town Live. And I remember the interview when you did yeah. uh, with, uh, with Lonely Town Live and you were by the campfire. Oh, and that, yeah. was, that was the best. That and was very, <laughs> that was very much pandemic times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That, but, but, you know, I mean, I did a couple virtual concerts during the pandemic, but yeah, the Lonely Town Festival that Alexa put on was amazing. And mm-hmm. that was an example of, you know, just making do with what you have, which is the ultimate art you could ever do. Yeah. And uh, you had the chance to play with so many greats like Gatson on what's going on, the encore. And uh, uh, at the Troubadour, there's some heavy uh, hitting session players. And are there any other artists that uh, you want to work with that you haven't been able to have the chance to work with? Wow, so many. Um, I mean, I I should keep like a running list. Um, I was... On the way here, on the drive over, um, I was listening to this Patrice Russian record mm-hmm. that I had never listened to before that um, Questlove posted about. Oh, nice. And uh, it was just, he was like, oh, this finally went online or whatever. They finally put this album up for streaming. And I was listening to it on the way here, and it's like, Patri- I, I don't know if you know Patrice Russian, uh, her music, but she... I gotta check her out. Yeah, you, you've you definitely heard her music before. Mm-hmm. It, um it's just like she uh, was kind of like a pop star, but she also plays piano like Herbie Hancock. Mm -hmm. Um, And this early record that he played was like, it was almost like some weird, bizarro Herbie Hancock record. And I was listening to it and I was like, man, Patrice Russian, how cool would it be to work with her? So yeah, I mean, the list list is endless um, because there's just, I don't know. There's it's in, there's infinite music to listen to. It's it it never stops, and you just hear something, and and um, being an artist, like I can't help but sometimes think, oh, what would it be like to collaborate with mm-hmm. those people? But sometimes it's beyond, you know, where yeah. it's just like, I just want to be a fan. Yeah, and uh, yeah, talking about shows, uh, how was going back to the Troubadour for your uh, return show for the. Like after COVID, how how was how was that show? It was you? wonderful. It was it really was. It was um, because there had been a couple shows leading up to it, mm-hmm. and um, there was a, a little bit of a foreignness, you know. And then by the time we got to that show, um, and getting on stage and just it felt it just felt great. 
it just felt really nice and to do it in my hometown and to feel all of that love is just like it's there's nothing that you know mimics that most definitely and from big stages small stages uh we also know that you also perform at the world stage down at view park and Lamar park Lamar yeah. park yeah yeah and how how, how is that and because ralph's dad is actually um he was at Lamar Park since like 30 years ago and he's part of like the board members. Really? And uh, yeah, and then when we found out, we saw the picture at Lamar, uh, Lamar Park and we was like, what, that's, that's Joey. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lamar, Lamar Park is um, a, f- a very foundational arts center of Los Angeles and has mm. been for a very long time. And I was lucky enough to have a history teacher in high school, Stephen Iswardi, mm. who um, took me to um, Lamert Park and exposed me to the artist community there and some of the history there and some of the history of revolutionary music in um, LA and at the time I was very much like on a a jazz mission Mm -hmm. you know and so yeah the world stage there which um, uh, has been like ground zero for a lot of musicians Mm -hmm. in LA um, more so than more so than I. I mean, I I used to go down there, and maybe we would go down there like once a month or something. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you still go down up recently? I, no, I haven't been down very much. I do have some friends who live right near there, mm-hmm. um, but um, yeah, I I need to uh, make my way back to the stage, you know. Um, but you know, uh, musicians like Thundercat and mm-hmm. uh, Kamasi Washington, Brandon Coleman. Um, you know, Terrence Martin, like they all came up through the world stage. And yeah. so it's it's a very potent um, launch pad for um, and safe haven for musicians to go and uh, work on their craft and, you know, safely. Yeah, yeah Thundercat just did a, a show at Lamar Park uh, two months ago for oh, Juneteenth. Really? And it was oh, ama- oh, yeah, yeah. It was absolutely amazing. Cool. And, uh, yeah, Ralph lives like two, two blocks down, and I lived with them over the summer. And got to enjoy like the culture of the food and everything oh, was beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely amazing yeah it's a really special place it, it really is you just walk down the street and run it run into conversations with total strangers and there's just a, a really supportive um beautiful um uh feeling and community mm-hmm. sur- surrounding Lumber park yeah and uh yeah i know we talked before you went to uh, you're a fellow la native and are there any like spots where like taco favorite taco spots i don't know if you like tacos but i love tacos <laughs> like do you have any favorite taco spots around la um sure i mean it's it's like there's the ones that are like the foodie spots mm-hmm. but then there's just like the taco spot that warms your heart because it's the one that got you through the night mm-hmm. and for me um that's taco zone oh nice which nice. yeah <laughs> on alvarado um in echo park um that was just like it's more of a nostalgia factor, and then right down the street, there's Leo's um, Leo's tacos, Leo's tacos or, yeah. or Leo's um, for the pastor. Um, so yeah, taco spots. Those those are like the two that pull on my heartstrings the most. Most well, definitely, Leo's absolutely absolutely amazing. Uh, like, I know King's Tacos also on on East LA, this area that they have the best horchata in my opinion. In my opinion, but uh, I could take one of those <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, coming into. 2022 uh we, we've been through so much social and political change and uh do you think as an artist with a platform share a responsibility to voice their opinion um i don't know i i, I think that i'm not sure i have a you know a steadfast opinion on that because i think um everybody's human experience is different mm-hmm. and um for those who feel compelled to try and do that I you know I think it's uh, there is an opportunity there Um, and so and you know some of the the greatest legacies in art are those who used it as a platform in that way Mm -hmm. but um, you know it's it's like a some sometimes not everybody is well equipped to be able to sort of like translate, um, you know, the right message in on that platform, and it doesn't mean that they can't still be um, 
to feel those things and 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 also um, support those things and and um, go out on the line for those things and live that life. Um, but um, you know, it's uh, to be a public facing person uh, sometimes in in that way can be can be complicated and mm -hmm. and uh, everybody's attentions on you and then you want to like like I, I think it's like there uh, different artists have different ways of, of sharing their opinion like Taylor Swift I know she doesn't really share her political dis, uh, opinions but I know some some artists would use their platform even though they're gonna get criticized but I think it's still good to to, to share like uh, during the BLM movements a lot of artists voice their opinions, even though there are critics about it. But I, I still feel, you know, it's a good way to, to sh uh, voice what you believe in. Yeah, I I totally I totally feel that. Um, you know, some there was. Uh, I think it was sort of the um, the balance between um, trying to express and support, and then also like recognize when there wasn't a, when there was uh, sort of like m more representatives of like virtue signaling mm -hmm. versus uh, really trying to listen and learn. And I think that we've, that uh, we've all been guilty of that in, in a sense. And so um, there's, there's, uh, it's a big responsibility in a way to, to do that and, um, but it's different for every, it's just different for everybody, I think. And um, I, I do admire people that are able to do it well and effectively, mm -hmm. and to definitely. actually help. Yeah, you know, it's definitely. And you know, as this interviewing interview is coming to an end, if if this booth is a phone, would you do you have a voicemail you want to leave to the rest of the world? Mm. Um, you're wonderful, and um, I hope that you're able um, to be really kind to yourself today. Thank you so much for this interview, Joey, and we're super excited for the ISP performance. Cool, thank, thank you, you for so having much. me. Yeah, are thank we just you. gonna move, move over to yep. the... Okay, <laughs> exactly. let's do it. I might have to tune my guitar up. Yeah. <laughs>